All right, kind of got this here in the way of where my wine is going to go. Let me just draw them right up here. And we'll shoot him right over there, okay? Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a spark plug. There's my center electrode, and there's my side electrode. Okay, so let me draw another one. Let's put him right here. Well, let me go on the top. Okay, there's my center electrode. There is my side electrode. Now, let's say this one is minus up here, and let's say this one has a positive polarity. Now, I do not know for sure what the polarity is, but for our discussion, it really doesn't matter. It's just that it would be backwards. Uh, but while we edit, let me show you something else here, talking about polarity. Um, now, you're not going to probably see this on, on automotive diagrams, at least I've never seen it, but you will probably run into it in electronic diagrams when you're working with transformers. You may see an actual dot on one end of the winding, okay, like a dot right here beside that plus. And then over here on the other side, you might see a dot right there. Now what that's, what that's telling us is that the, it's talking about the phase between the primary winding and the secondary winding. Basically this plus up here, that means that the plus will be down here. See how the dot is beside each one? If we were looking at this, say for AC signal, if we were putting an AC signal on here, which is like that, then as this is going positive, right, like that, that means that this one down here is going to be going this way, right? So in other words, they're in phase. But what about up here? That means this is going to be inverted. It's going to be 180 degrees out of phase, okay? Just wanted to, just wanted to point that out to you, okay? Now let's get back to our spark plugs. Let's look at some... Uh, current flow through this thing. All right, so we're going to look at uh, electron flow this time. Electron flow is from negative to positive. So here's our current flow. Now, the electrons are leaving out of this side of the winding. They're coming down, they're coming down. They're going through the center electrode. Now they're going to jump from the center uh, electrode over to the side electrode. So that means that we got a direction from the center, center electrode, okay, to side electrode. Okay, that means this one here is being fired with a negative polarity. Okay, now the side, the side electrodes here, as you already know, they're tied into the cylinder head, so they are internally connected together, okay? So now, it's gonna go from here, through here, to the side electrode, but now it's gonna jump from the side electrode to the center electrode, okay? So you see the difference in the arrows? You see how they're going backwards, the way the spark is jumping? This one is being fired with a plus polarity. An easy way to tell is if you know the polarity of the winding, look to see which terminal is going out to the center electrode. This minus here is connected to the center electrode, therefore fired negatively. Positive electrode, on the other hand, is going to the center electrode on this one, so he's fired positively. Now back in the old days, everything was fired negatively, all right? And the reason for that was that electrons like to go from a hot spot to a cooler spot. Now, the center electrode actually runs hotter than the side electrode. The side electrode, although being exposed, you think maybe run hotter, but it has more of a heat sink to it because it is tied into the block, so it can dissipate the heat. On the other hand, this here, center electrode has a uh, ceramic insulator around it so it's harder for it to dissipate its heat so the electrons actually like to go from a hotter to a cooler object so that's why they actually did that and in the process they found out there was a lot less uh, erosion on the uh, electrodes so that's why we stuck with negatively 
negative polarity for a lot of years with like the distributor systems and all. Okay. Also, they found out that if uh, under compression, the voltage doesn't have to be as high to jump from the center electrode going down to the side electrode. You can think of that as that the center electrode here is a little bit more pointier, a little bit sharper, and so electrons, when they start to leave from one object to go to another, they like to leave from a sharp object to go to a more blunt object. On the other hand, look right here. This one here, the side electrode, is flat. It's a piece of flat metal going from there to, a, to the pointed object. So actually, they found out that it's going to take actually 30% more voltage for that to happen, that being positively fired. So that's why these here waste spark ignition systems have such a high voltage rating on them as far as the 40 kV capability there. Uh, so now let's go and look at what happens when uh, when the, when we're under compression and when we're under exhaust stroke. Let's say this here is uh, this one right up here at the top. Let's say he's uh, number I don't know. Let's just say number one cylinder. Okay, on compression. Now I'm not sure if number one is negatively, has a negative polarity and number four is positive, so it could be backwards on that, I'm not sure. But for our discussion here, it really doesn't matter, okay? Now, now this one right here, number one cylinder on the compression stroke is going to require more spark voltage to jump this gap, all right? Why is that? than it does for the exhaust over here. The reason is that any any time you put uh, a spark in under a compression, under pressure, it automatically, just, just because of physics, it's gonna require more spark energy. Now let's say typically this is gonna be, oh, let's say from eight to 12 kV. But let's say for our purposes, we'll just say 10 kV is what is needed to jump this spark. Now this one over here, on the other hand, only needs about maybe 2 to 3 kV to jump its spark. And for us, let's just say it takes 2 kV, okay? All right. So the one that really is doing all the work, is the core, of course, is the one that's on compression, which is this here number one cylinder. The number four cylinder is actually jumped the spark, but what did it do? It's on the exhaust stroke. Well, it pretty much didn't do anything. That's why, and it's a waste. It's a wasted spark. So that's why they call it a, a waste spark ignition. While we're here uh, discussing this here voltages here, let's also mention that this uh, this cylinder that's on compression, they actually call that the event cylinder. Okay. And this one down here, on the exhaust stroke, they call that the waste cylinder. Okay. Now while we're talking about this here voltage, uh, going back to the 10 kV, that's going to take more voltage to fire that uh, plug while it's under compression. Now this is a tip that when you're checking for spark, what you want to do is you want to check to see if you can get at least a half an inch spark to jump across a gap when you're outside on checking for you know if you got a no stock condition preferably say three quarter inch even more if you can pull about a three quarter inch spark that'll give you 30 about 30,000 volts now what that's going to tell you is you know right then that the coil is okay and that when this here spark is being delivered on the compression stroke that do you know right then that you've got enough spark there, energy there to fire that spark plug under compression. I mean, I see a lot of guys, they'll sit there and they'll hook a spark plug up or, you know, they get about an eighth of an inch gap and they see it jump and okay, everything is good. Well, it is not good because you don't know that's not going to be enough under uh, compression. Just remember, you want to get a good uh, spark jumping out there to confirm because what you're trying to do is you're simulating the outside conditions what you see that spark do then when you put that spark plug in and when it gets down in the spark plug in the compression you know then that that spark is going to fire so just keep that in mind okay 
Now, I, I mentioned I, I showed the current flowing from the minus, starts at the minus, jumps, and, and you know, before you can have current flow, basically it ain't going to jump here because it ain't got a return path. So I'm looking at this from what I've read and what I understand, this thing happens so fast, it's simultaneous, but it could be, we could be talking a few microseconds in between, but for all due respect, let's just say this thing is firing pretty much the same time. So after it fires here, then basically going this way, then the current is coming back this way to return back to the secondary winding. As I mentioned earlier on the firing order, Let's get him up there so you can see it. Each coil pack is fired every 120 degrees of crank rotation. And that's all coming from the uh, crank two crank signals it's looking at. And we're going to look at that in the next video when we look at crank, sensor, crank sensors and its signals. And we'll get more into the ignition module, a little bit more on that. Um, but basically what will happen is we're going to fire 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 and if you look our firing order here's our firing order right there right okay so when it fires one in four turns 120 degrees on the crank it's going to fire six and three then five and two now remember one six and five are on compression now when it gets around to turn that was one rotation of the crank now we're getting ready to go around the second time. So now we're getting ready. We're going to fire again one and four. But this time, now this one is on compression. This one is on exhaust. So now the rolls have reversed. So now we're going to fire the four. Now three is on compression. We're going to fire him. Now two is on compression. Now we fired him. So that's 720 degrees of the crank and all six cylinders have fired. Uh, while we're here, let's do let's do another one. Let's say here's one for a four cylinder. We got a one, three, four, two. This is a waste spark ignition. So what do we do? We divide it in half. We take the numbers on the end. We pull them over here. We put the four there. We put the two there. Right now we know that one coil is for firing on one and four. And we know that three and two is being fired. So we know these one and four is companion cylinders and three and two is a companion cylinders. Okay, how do we know about the 120 degrees here? About far as the, uh, how much it would take? Well, for all four stroke engines, doesn't matter how many cylinders they got, two full turns of the crank and all of the cylinders are fired. So if we have 720 degrees, and we divide that by six, what we're gonna get is 120 degrees of each piston for, its, for it to do its work. 120 degrees, another cylinder fires. 120 fires. Now, if you have an eight cylinder, okay? If you have an eight cylinder, 720 degrees, then that's gonna be 90 degrees. 90 degrees of the turn of the crank, you're gonna be firing a, uh, a cylinder for every 90 degrees. And finally, if we look at a if we look at a four cylinder, 720 degrees, that's going to be 180 degrees. So each piston is going to move 180 degrees on this uh, on uh, to complete its operation. So in other words, at 180 degrees, a cylinder is going to fire, turn of the crank, 180 degrees until we get 720. All of them are done. Okay guys, I can't think of anything else right now for the waste spark ignition. If you got any questions, holler out, be sure to let me know. Hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense. Um, try to cover everything I could think of here. So anyway, you guys take care and I appreciate you watching the video.